What is going on sports card fiends? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we are here with a video on stock up, stock down for the USMNT performance versus Honduras, a game that actually turned out pretty well. If you watch the full thing, wasn't convincing the entire time, however they did end up bringing it all together there at the end with a nice 4-1 victory, all four goals being scored in the second half, so a little terrifying, not gonna lie, but Overall, a lot of good takeaways to get from this game and a lot of bad takeaways that you can also bring from the game and we're gonna discuss both right now. So we'll start with the stock ups. That's the real fun, especially in a game like this. And the first one's gonna go to Anthony Robinson, one of the biggest stock ups of the game. Personally, uh, the last few performances from him in the US men's national team, I've seen him solidifying his spot on the team. Sadly, Burhalter hasn't seen it the same way it doesn't appear. However, after this performance and going forward, Hopefully he will change his tone there. I think that Robinson's honestly more of a lock at this point at left back than maybe Dest might even be at right back um, from what we've seen from Dest in these World Cup qualifiers and honestly even back to the Nations League during the summer. So with that said, really impressed. Obviously he got the goal in addition to that, just really good in attack going forward and defensively for us as a substitute. Was very happy to see him brought on and made an immediate impact into the game. Robinson is a player that has a ton of upside going forward at a position where we do lack depth, so he could be a big player for us, and, you know, potentially going forward, could even grow into that position more and more, and that's kind of the upside with a lot of these guys. Our team is insanely young, so one thing I will say, just to tamper expectations, is while this is a U.S. Men's National Team card channel, I love the players, I love the cards, and I like the long-term future, that's exactly it. It's a long-term game here, and that's why, you know, I'm not going to get too hyped or too low on these guys just by a couple performances when they're 20 years old. Of course it matters, of course it plays a role, but at the end of the day, you know, this is a really, really drawn out process that's going to happen over a long period of time. And so coming down from that to say that Ricardo Pepe is going to be the second stock up and a big stock up, because again, this is a position where we do have questions in the nine role, and Pepe did start this game, shout out to Greg Berhalter for actually starting him. I know there were a lot of confused and, you know, kind of angry uh, U.S. Men's National Team fans that they didn't see Pepe in the first couple games and they were afraid maybe he doesn't even play with us in this window. If that happened, then, you know, all hell could have broken loose. So with that, Pepe getting started and actually having an immense impact on the game, involved in literally every single goal for us, and, I mean, looked the part. He didn't look out of place at all in his first ever World Cup qualifying game at the young age of 18. Again, at a role where we have a lot of question marks and maybe this could be the springboard that then gets Pepe over to Europe. I know that Bayern have been looking at him for a little bit and I know that, you know, other European leagues have drawn interest in him. But if, I mean, with performances like this on a big stage for us, could definitely push him up to that next level that will get that interest and might get him that move overseas. Then next on the stock up is Miles Robinson. Really enjoyed him throughout this window playing all of the 270 minutes that we had at center back. And honestly, looked better than John Brooks in my opinion. So that means a lot. John Brooks is essentially a lock starter for us. And, you know, up until this point, seemed like he was our guy on defense. And Miles Robinson didn't look out of place next to him. Didn't look as in control and possession like a John Brooks, but on the defensive end where you need him to cover for John Brooks, he did a great job at it and really just stomped out a lot of the fires that we had on the back line. And then I'm going to put two players together in the stock up section. They can both kind of split it. And that is Tyler Adams and Brendan Aronson, both typically midfielders for us. However, Brendan Aronson playing a little bit more on the wing in this game and Tyler Adams actually playing a bit more at right back. I was impressed by both of them. Um, Aronson's performance off the bench was really good, got ourselves a goal and did a lot of good pressing work, which is really what he's good at on that wing role. Tyler Adams also played into his role incredibly well, even though it wasn't right back and that's kind of questionable you could say but again with the depth that we've had in this camp with the injuries we've had with Wes McKinney getting sent off like there, there's a lot of holes that need to be filled so I can I can sort of understand it the only baffling thing is we brought like 10 defenders to this camp so to still think that we got to send Tyler Adams back to our defense is a little strange of course Tyler Adams does play as a right back sometimes for Leipzig so it's not anything out of the usual for him just strange to see him in that sort of role with the USMNT only a partial stock up for these guys because I honestly expect it out of them at this point. I'm not really surprised, but I do want to acknowledge it. And then for the stock downs, the first two are going to be pretty notable stock downs. And the first one is Josh Sargent, our other nine that played in this game, was a winger slash partial striker at times, depending on where Pulisic was. Um, you know, whenever you compare him to Pepe, who was also on the field, it just seemed like worlds apart. 
Um, Sargent was subbed off early because he had a lot of errant passes and kind of some bad touches and stuff you really don't expect from Sargent. I mean, that's that's the thing he kind of, you know, bases his game around. He's not too much of a poacher, so he has to be that guy in build-up, and there are a lot of errant passes. The stock is so far down for me. Of course, as I mentioned before, these are 18 to 20-year-olds, so there's, there's a lot of time, a lot of games to be played, a lot of things to be had along the way, so this doesn't mean it's over for him by any means, but it is... A definite step down in terms of where people see him on that pecking order because people have been waiting for their moment to dethrone Josh Sargent and I think that this is definitely that moment for a lot of people. So his stock down is exacerbated by the performance of Pepe and I think that's why it's even a bigger step back than some would hope and personally it makes sense to me. I mean Sargent hasn't shown for a while now. I mean essentially we've been waiting for him to turn that corner and that corner just never been turned so until it happens you know, I, I see him on the outside looking in at this point. Of course, with the rotation in these sorts of uh, windows, you know, I, I think maybe he makes it back into that starting role. I don't think that this is the end, but it certainly wasn't a good performance. And going along with that same theme, another big snack down for me is John Brooks um, allowed uh, basically another goal sort of on his behalf. So, I mean, in terms of this window, both of our goals have been directly correlated with John Brooks's lack of effort on the defensive end which doesn't make a lot of, I mean, obviously as a defender, you know, you're a center back, you kind of have to step up in these scenarios, especially as a team that we are that has had trouble scoring. You know, you can't just allow a free goal like that. Of course, didn't come back to bite us this time, but very easily could have. Again, if you watch the game that first half, we looked clueless. We looked like we had no idea what was going on, um, no plan of attack going forward. And so to just give up a goal like that on the other end, really damning and so for me as someone that saw Brooks as a lock starter I'm actually becoming more keen on having Miles Robinson and a Chris Richards pairing I think that would be amazing as well so if Brooks is going to continue to perform like this then I could see a spot being gone by the World Cup which I never would have thought before and then to round out the video as I did two pseudo stock up performances earlier I'll do two pseudo stock down performances essentially people I've already been skeptical of and they've kind of confirmed it more um, and that is James Sands had a really tough go at it in the midfield for us this game. However, in the past, he's only played as a center back for us and very rarely. So, I mean, honestly, I think Burhalter kind of threw him out to the Wolves and that's his own fault, which leads me also to Burhalter, another stock down, just a, a coach that I cannot get behind. I do not see the plan, even though he got a result here. That doesn't mean he's safe in my mind. It might make him safe in the Federation's mind and they might give him a little bit of a pass, but certainly I'm not going to. I wasn't that impressed. And so going forward, it's definitely going to be something to keep an eye on. I don't think that Greg is up to the standard that we should have for the U.S. men's national team coaching position. And hopefully over time, we see that change. I'm not sure when that time will happen. But again, didn't really instill any confidence in me, especially after that first half that I saw today. So with that said, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Anything you thought about this game, stock up, stock down. Let me know down below in a comment. Would love to hear it. And if you want some more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. But with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day. And uh, peace.